in Leo Tolstoy's memorable 1886 novel of mortality, The Death of Ivan Ilyich. The titular protagonist learns he's dying, and as he comes to accept death, he finds meaning in his life. The novella, short novel, begins in the law courts with Peter Ivanovich telling his fellow lawyers that he just read that their colleague Ivan Ilyich has died. The powerful and self-important lawyers think only about how Ilyich's death will affect their chances of getting a promotion at work. At Ivan Ilyich's house, where his body is laid out and a funeral will be held for him, his colleagues assemble, intent on finding trivial ways to amuse or distract themselves so they don't have to think about the inevitability of death. A while later, Peter is drawn aside by Ivan's wife, Preskovia, one of the main characters, whose crocodile tears hide her true interest. Can Peter manage to get more money for her from Ivan's pension fund? Later in the evening, Peter meets Garasim, the servant, who says simply that sooner or later, everyone dies. Peter feels a certain discomfort and thinks that inevitable death was not applicable to him. The story then shifts to 30 years earlier. Ivan had a normal childhood, studying law and excelling at his studies. Ivan internalizes the values and mores of the upper middle class that he will be part of as a practicing lawyer. Here, readers will note the symbol of the phoenix. Ivan Ilyich is said to be the phoenix of his family, which he's referred to in French. In mythology, the phoenix is a long-lived, high-flying bird who dies and then rises from the ashes of its former self. The phoenix is associated with the sun and thus also symbolizes renewal. In many ancient mythologies, the phoenix represents immortality. In the Christian tradition, the phoenix sometimes symbolizes resurrection. The French expression reveals the family's confidence in Yvonne's rise to great heights within society and may also represent his ultimate rising above his physical death and emerging as a spiritual being who is beyond death by the novel's end. After getting his law degree, Ivan works as an examining magistrate, gets married, and his wife becomes pregnant. He tries as much as possible to avoid being with his wife and succeeds in establishing a distant attitude toward his family that he will maintain for many years. When Ivan is passed over for a promotion at work, he's furious. He takes leave from work and moves his family to his brother-in-law's house in a rural area. Depressed, he determines to take no position that pays him less than 5,000 rubles per year. Ivan travels to St. Petersburg to find a good-paying job, and by sheer luck, obtains a well-paying one from a friend. Ivan finds a house for his family, and then throws himself into buying the best or most fashionable furniture and other household necessities for his new home. As he's putting up drapes, Ivan has a mishap on a ladder, banging his side against the window frame, and is slightly bruised. The bruise hurts a bit, and Ivan thinks nothing of it because he's so wrapped up in preparing his new home. Ivan's family all seem happy with their new life. Ivan still likes escaping from his family and develops a liking for playing bridge. After a while, Ivan notices a disturbing pain in his left side, the side of his body that crashed against the window frame. He tries to ignore it, but the pain gets continuously worse. The incessant pain makes Ivan irritable. He sees several doctors about the pain, but none of them can diagnose the cause, let alone cure it. In fact, doctors are one of the book's main symbols. They try to act as if they know what ails Ivan and how to cure it, but are totally incapable of diagnosing or treating it. Doctors and medicine in general represent Tolstoy's disdain for and distrust of modern science and technology, especially as it is venerated by the rational egoists. Neither has the ability, knowledge, or understanding to help Ivan Ilyich. Yet like him and others in his class, the doctors play their roles to the hilt. Doctors in medicine are also denigrated as Ivan Ilyich comes to understand that his illness may, perhaps, be worsened by the false life he's led, something the doctors cannot be expected to diagnose or treat. Ivan's experience of dying is eventually revealed an experience of opening to his inner spirituality, which again, doctors can't understand. Thus, doctors also represent a secular hindrance to their patient's acceptance of the inevitability of death. Ivan takes the various medicines the doctors prescribe, but none have any effect on his pain. Eventually, Ivan becomes depressed. One night, he realizes his condition may not be an illness that can be cured, but a matter of life and death. Ivan is terrified of dying and finds no solace in his wife or colleagues, who themselves avoid thinking about or discussing mortality. Ivan feels totally isolated and becomes increasingly desperate as his incessant pain gets worse. 
In a short time, Yvonne can no longer work because the pain keeps him from paying attention to the cases he's working on. He takes to spending his time lying on the sofa at home. The pain increases and he finds no position that alleviates it, though having his legs raised slightly helps a bit. One day, Ivan asks Garasim if he would hold his legs up higher. Garasim is more than willing to help, and he spends hours with Ivan's legs resting on his shoulders. Ivan feels at ease with Garasim because the man is accepting of death, and he takes great comfort in Garasim's help, his authenticity, and his lack of pretense. Everyone else around him refuses to acknowledge, let alone talk about, Ivan's impending death. Only Garasim accepts death as a natural part of life, and so sees Ivan's situation as it truly is. Ivan's family, friends, and doctors all deny Ivan's clearly impending death because acknowledging death is just not considered proper for people of their class. Ivan feels increasingly isolated from everyone except Garasim. One night, Ivan has a dream in which he's being pushed into a black sack. He wants to fall into it, yet he's terrified of it. Ivan hears his inner voice speaking to him about his life and his impending death. Ivan can no longer leave the sofa, but he spends his time thinking about and analyzing the life he's led. He comes close to accepting that his life has been a fraud, something inauthentic that did not come from his innermost and truest self. Ivan tries to figure out a reason for his terrible suffering. Why must he suffer? Whenever he comes close to true understanding, Ivan's mind withdraws from the truth about his life. He thinks his life was good because it was proper, since he did everything according to society's dictums. At the insistence of his wife, Ivan sees a priest and takes Holy Communion. One night, Ivan is with Garasim when he suddenly has serious doubts about whether he's lived the life he should have lived. He thinks again of the black sack, a key symbol that primarily represents death. His feelings about the black sack are ambivalent. Although he feels like he wants to fall into its depths, he also fights against being pushed into it. His resistance to entering the black sack reveals the battle between his fear of death and his acceptance of it. Yet once he breaks into it, Ivan experiences a light and the fear of death no longer has power over him. It may also be the black sack symbolizes rebirth in its likeness to a womb. The pain that Ivan feels as he falls into the black sack may be akin to the suffering of birth. The light he sees may be his entry into a new incarnation, or perhaps his spiritual rebirth after death. The two were linked in the beliefs of the author in his spiritual conversion. He thinks about the terrible pain that comes from both being pushed into it and not being able to just fall in himself, understanding that the artificial and trivial life he's lived is preventing him from entering the black sack and whatever relief he might find there. Then an unnameable force strikes Ivan in the chest and side and pushes him into it. Once inside, Ivan experiences an intense light. His son approaches the sofa and kneels beside his father. Ivan's hand touches his son's head. Ivan feels sad for the boy and for his wife as she approaches her dying husband, realizing that every aspect of his life has been totally artificial and inauthentic, and apart from all those around him, as they have been from him. Ivan lets go of all the artificiality that had in a way imprisoned him in a life that was not truly correct at all. Ivan suddenly experiences intense joy, sighs, and dies. The motifs of suffering and selfishness, pleasure, and isolation can be found throughout the short novel. The author explores the many types of suffering that an inauthentic life may inflict on people. Ivan Ilyich suffers from emotional isolation from his family and colleagues, indignity in the helplessness his illness forces on him, fear and doubt. The modes of pain that can beset a person who's lived an inauthentic life are manifold. Throughout Ivan Ilyich's life, he seeks pleasure as often as he can. His pursuit of it isolates him from his family, which in the end leaves him alone on his deathbed. His family, too, seeks selfish pleasure, and they are only too eager to get away from the dying man to pursue it. It's also easy to understand how this short novel is dense with important themes. Mortality, the inevitability of death and how people deal with it, is one of the themes. The heart of this novella explores people's denial and fear of death. The story explores the ways in which people go out of their way to deny it and refuse to deal with it. They distract themselves from the fact that death is a natural part of life. Immersing oneself in the artificiality and distractions of everyday life is one way that people deny or refuse to think about their own, or others, mortality. For the characters in the story, death is something that happens to strangers. 
Without a spiritual awakening, it's impossible for them to free themselves from it so they can access their inner being or soul, which accepts and has no fear of death. Artificiality and authenticity is a theme that shows how characters are bound by the expectations of others of their class. Everyone feels forced to live according to these strict but accepted social norms. No one feels inclined to or able to break free from these societal expectations. For this reason, no one is attuned to their inner rather than their false exterior being. Ivan Ilyich finally breaks through the psychological prison of societal expectations that he has allowed to define his life. In releasing his inner being, Ivan Ilyich frees himself from the soulless straitjacket of society's demands and dictates, and he can find peace and acceptance. Ivan Ilyich and others in the story accept and live by the dictates of their social class, the theme of bourgeois acceptability. They're upwardly striving and accept all the modes of behavior, thought, opinion, dress, and decoration that their social class prescribes. Like many bourgeois, they're addicted to materialism. The author frequently uses the words propriety and decorum to describe Ivan and his cohorts. What matters most to people of this class is that they look and act a certain way that's considered proper to other bourgeoisie they know. Acceptance and redemption is a final theme. Before he becomes mortally ill, Ivan Ilyich denies death as vehemently as others do. Yet as he comes to realize that his illness will be fatal, he slowly comes to accept the fact that he is dying. The process is long and physically painful, but it begins to free him from his fear and agony. Once Ivan Ilyich has accepted his mortality, he is able to let go of the artificial trappings that had constituted and defined his life.